after you eat Thanksgiving dinner and do your Black Friday shopping, you can relax and catch a Florida Florida State big rivalry football game. Welcome back to sports, I'm Amanda Cheney. It's been five years since the Gators have come away with a win against the Knolls, and boy does everyone know it. That's one of the funnest weeks of all season. You know, you mark that, you know, you circle that on your calendar, you're ready to go play them, no matter what each person's record is. And uh, to be honest with you, I don't think their record reflects how good of a team they are. Going to the grocery store, you want to have bragging rights over your neighbors for the year, and and so to get that win, would you gives gives all of uh, all of the Gator Nation the the bragging rights over over all the state's fans. Definitely get the the backlash from it, from you know social media to you know a lot of other different things that go into play. But uh, I don't think any it really has affected anybody. I think everybody's you know just ready to come out this week and just ready to practice and uh, know that this is our last week and that we got to, you know, be ready to give it all we have. Game time in Tallahassee on Saturday is set for noon. The Gator men's basketball team is down in paradise for a holiday tournament in the Bahamas. Tomorrow at noon, they will tip off against former Gator coach Long Kruger and the Oklahoma Sooners. Gator head coach Mike White wants his team to treat the tournament like a game and not a vacation. First off, you're on a level playing field because every other team's dealing with the same thing. And yeah, I think there'll be certain teams that, that go off on all these excursions and, and and treat it halfway like a vacation. And there'll be certain teams that don't. And and but you never know how much of a factor that is either. The game tomorrow is set for noon, and if the Gators beat the Sooners, they will take on the winner of the Wisconsin Stanford game on Wednesday. On the women's side, the Gators are on the road to play the Indiana Hoosiers. After a close overtime battle against Northwestern at home this past weekend, the Gators are looking for their first win of the season tomorrow. Tip-off is scheduled for 2 o'clock. Now, it's not quite baseball season yet, but that doesn't mean the Gator baseball team isn't hard at work preparing for the 2019 season. Rachel West has a preview. It's been just five months since the Gators returned from Omaha, but that's not stopping Kevin O'Sullivan's squad from getting ready for next year's tournament. It'll be a tough road ahead, though, if they want to make it back for the fifth season in a row. Compared to the 2018 roster, there's going to be a lot of turnover heading into the 2019 season. We have some key freshmen that will play a lot this year and probably get put into the fire pretty quick. In total, there are 14 additions to the roster nine freshmen, and five transfers who make up the fifth-ranked recruiting class in the nation. Of the nine freshmen, five of them were selected in the 2018 MLB draft, the highest draft pick being outfielder Kendrick Cali Lau, who was taken in the 30th round by the St. Louis Cardinals. Freshman Corey Acton and Roberto Pena are a couple other position players who have excelled throughout the fall and could end up becoming a big part of this Gator team. But one of the biggest areas of the roster that's been impacted is the pitching staff. After losing some of the top pitchers in the country in Brady Singer, Jackson Kowar, and Michael Byrne, new guys are going to have to step up. Freshman Ben Specht, David Lucci, and Christian Scott might just be a few of the ones to do so. We lost a few guys that were really exceptional for us the past few years, and uh, those guys that I named are going to be okay coming in to help us fill those roles. But they'll still have some solid returning pitchers to help them out when they need it. If they don't understand, they'll go through Dyson or Jack or I and, and kind of ask or under, get a better understanding of what's going on during practice. Rachel West, WUFT Sports. The Gators wrapped up their fall schedule Sunday with an 8-1 win over the 18U USA national team. Their spring season is set to kick off February 15th against Long Beach State. On the court, the Gator volleyball team has a busy week ahead of them with the game tomorrow and Friday. Tomorrow's game in Knoxville decides which team will be second in the SEC, as both are currently tied right now. Back at home on Friday, the Gators will finish their regular season with the game against South Carolina. Thanks, Amanda. Despite Thanksgiving still on the horizon in New York City, classic December holiday cheer is being unveiled just in time for Black Friday. Saks Fifth Avenue unveiled its annual holiday windows in New York City yesterday. You can see the 10-story high light show and the first ever digital display that followed the big reveal. This year, the department store partnered with Broadway Cares to put on the performance, titled Theater of Dreams. It's an ode to Broadway and it benefits the nonprofit, which raises funds for awareness for HIV and AIDS. You can see the bright lights in the big city now through January 2nd. And before we go, let's take one last check on the weather.
Outside, temperatures looking pleasant, 68 degrees in Gainesville, 70 in Bronson, 70 in Ocala, a little bit cooler down south, 60 in New Crystal River, 68 near the villages. Tonight will be clear with temperatures dropping to the 50s, maybe the early 40s by the time you wake up, around 55 degrees by 10 p.m., 53 by midnight, and expect some fog with, through the overnight hours. Your, use your low beams if you encounter any of that fog. Temperatures tomorrow, 70 degrees in Gainesville, just struggling to get to that amount in most places across north central Florida, but it will be beautiful weather if you're deciding to go ahead and go start traveling for your Thanksgiving Day plans. Here's a look at the weather map across the country. The Northeast experiencing a low pressure system moving through the area. That's bringing some snow showers to the Northeast and taking out, taking a look out West. Some showers also in, uh, moving through the Seattle, Portland, San Francisco, and a couple periphery showers moving through LA. If you're headed out West, also make sure to keep an eye on your travel plans and stay updated with your airline. Taking a look at the next six days out here in North Central Florida, will be a, a nice pleasant fall weather for this week. Thanksgiving day weather will be great. Saturday temperatures move up to 78 degrees, but that's when the storm system moves through. Back to you. Thanks, Kyle. Our next TV newscast will be next Monday at 5. In the meantime, WUFT News can be found on radio, WUFT-FM, and online at WUFT.org. Coming up on Channel 5 this evening, the BBC New World News is next, and the PBS NewsHour is at 7. Good night, and happy Thanksgiving.